Hey guys, it's Felicia, aka The Vlog Girl. And today, as you can see, we have a bunch of things to talk about. Oh, my fan is still on. Okay, I'm back. So as you can see, I got a new haircut. That's a long story. And I did go camping last weekend. Um, I did vlog there, but there were so many things that happened. I felt like I should be like making a storytelling video instead of having a vlogging video. This might, this might be coming off as a rant video, but you know what? I don't know. I'm just going to get started. <laughs> Obviously, my hair is way, way different. I look totally different compared to my long hair, you know, my hair was like down here. So I went to this hairdresser, I was getting ready for my back to school cut because I didn't want my hair too long and I was going to play tennis so it would be really hot. And I asked her to cut it to my shoulders so my hair would be still kind of same, maybe I only took off like 3 inches so it would be like up to here. And she goes, Oh, well, why don't I cut it a tad bit above your shoulders, that way it doesn't flip out. Like, it'll flip out because it keeps on staying there. And I was like, eh, I think that's fine, I just still want to be able to put my hair up. And then, so she goes, why don't I just make it a tad bit shorter? And I was like, okay, I guess that's fine then. Or she literally did it, like, two inches above my shoulders. I know you see here, this is the back of my hair, but, like, the top of my hair is, like, right here right here it's like right here so basically from here to here that is not a tad bit above my shoulders people say it looks like a bob and really it's not because bobs come this way like it comes from like shorter back here to long here but mine's like I guess a reverse bob it's like from short to here back there so I don't even know what kind of haircut this is and when I was cutting my hair she's like does it look okay because I guess my emotions showed out that I did like it and of course I had to say it was okay, because there was no way I could have told her, Yeah, why don't you cut it a little bit longer? There was no way that I could have, like, told her to make my hair longer, if you guys get what I'm trying to say. So I was just kind of like, I guess I'll have to deal with it. It only grows like an inch every two months, and I wanted two inches, so basically, I'm going to have to wait four more months. So this happened three days ago. My camping trip, that happened five days ago. So we went camping from Friday to Sunday. So we went there around like Friday afternoon and left Sunday afternoon, so you can say approximately two days. The first day, nothing really happened. We barbecued, it was good food, and I slept in the tent at like 1.30 in the morning. Well, okay, I went into the tent at like 1.30. I got paranoid. To be honest, I got really scared because I was listening. I was hearing the winds and the trees and the leaves rustling. And at first, I even saw, like, I thought I saw a shadow, like, of a person coming to our tent. And I got so paranoid because I was scared someone's gonna kidnap me. Because like, when you? So I didn't go to sleep until two. Woke up at three. Needed to use the restroom. The bathroom, the cabin. We had some cabins there. But like it only fit four people and there were like seven people in my family so I had to sleep in the tent. Back to sleep at four and then I woke up at six in the morning because the sun was shining so bright and I barely slept at all that night. It was only three hours. So I went biking at like 7 p.m. after we ate dinner. And, and no one wanted to come with me so I was like okay fine I'll just bike a little bit. And I've been there before I just never gone camping before. So I went to the normal trail that I usually go, and as I start to go into this trail, because like you have to go away before you can get into the actual trail where there's like lots of trees and everything. A few hundred meters, my bike, I don't know what happened, it just broke. Like you can still pedal it, like you can still pedal, but it's not moving. The bike is not moving anywhere. I was two miles away from the cabin, I did not want to walk back there with my broken bike. So I was about to call my mom and there was no service. No service at all. I had to walk back two miles with my bike by myself. Two miles isn't too bad, but like for a girl, like, I mean, you know, us girls, we tend to get a little bit paranoid because like some stuff happens to girls, but it won't happen to guys. And it was getting dark, so I was getting a little bit scared. I made 
went back home safe and sound because I was fake calling someone the whole time. That's what I do. I really just fake talk and act like I'm talking to someone. So my bike broke down and I thought that was like the worst moment of all in my camping trip. I was wrong. I was really, really wrong. So it was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We were getting ready to go leave because it was a Sunday and there was work for everyone tomorrow because it was going to be Monday tomorrow. Everyone had left except for us, but we were already packing, going to go home, and I was in charge of taking care of the kids because, you know, everyone was busy packing, my dad was helping with his family friends, I thought I was, um, I was in charge of taking care of the kids. And you can probably imagine these kids are like eight and under, so I was basically with kids the whole entire trip. So there was a cabin, someone was in there, and they were staying overnight from Sunday to Monday evening because I guess we didn't have work Monday. So there were two guys there. There were one in his 40s, I think, and one in his late 50s. They were brothers. And they started talking to me because they're, I guess they're pretty social people and I didn't mind that. And so they asked me where we were from, how old I was, yada yada yada. You know, stuff like, you know, when you get to know someone. It was going fine. And so the guy in the 40s, his wife came out with a beer in her hand and she just walks out and says what the okay you guys probably know what it is it's heaven and okay we good and I was shocked I was like um okay that's a great way to start you know great great first impression just so you guys can visualize it the two guys that were cooking were Americans and the guy in the late 40s his wife was Vietnamese she wasn't born in America, so her English is a lot like, her English accent is a lot like thicker, I guess. It's like a really strong Asian accent, if you guys know what I mean. She goes, hey, what's up, new neighbors? And I was like, oh, hey. She was really outgoing. She has three kids, and I was like, oh, okay, well, she's a pretty social mom. So she talks to me, and she asks me to say things, but every once in a while, she'll add in a cuss word, and... It made me a little bit uncomfortable because she was saying it pretty much every other sentence. But I guess that was just her personality and I didn't really care anymore because I got used to it in that 10 minutes. Until she asked me this, do you have a boyfriend? That was a really awkward question and I, I laughed. I was like, no I don't have a boyfriend. And I really wish I said I did have a boyfriend because she's like, oh my goodness, I can set you up with this son. And I was like, wait, 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 what? Hold up for a second. Set me up with someone? You're playing matchmaker, and we have barely gotten to know each other for like 15 minutes, and you're already trying to set me up with someone? And she was referring to the guys in his late 50s, his son. That's her nephew. And I was like, oh, okay. So I wasn't really interested in it because, you know, I was already a little bit uncomfortable. And I guess I looked around because I was wondering where the sun is. And she's like, oh, he's not here yet. He's just went to the grocery store to get some stuff for us before we start actually camping. And I was like, oh, okay. So logically thinking, she knows I'm 14. He can drive because he could go to the grocery store. So... Since I'm 14, I'm guessing that he would probably be 16 or 17 because he knows how to drive. And I was like, oh, how old is he? And she goes, he's 23. Wait, hold up for a second. I, you know I'm 14. He's 23. That's like a nine year gap. And that's not even right. Like, I haven't even started my first year in high school and he's already past college. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Of course, the nephew's dad, which was her brother-in-law, was right behind us and he was like, yeah, she would be perfect for him. And I was like, oh my gosh, do you even realize who you're talking to? I am a 14 year old girl that you're talking to. You're not talking to a 20 year old girl. It's 14. And so the lady, she asked her brother-in-law to call him. And I was like, oh my goodness, I do not want to meet this guy. And so, he calls and the son says, oh, I'm like 15 minutes away. Oh, wait, 15 minutes? I need more time. Like, don't come over that early because I don't really want to see you. And my mom came over because she was done cleaning out the cabin. She went over to say hi to the guys. And things went really weird. A husband, which was in the in the, his 40s, which was married to the girl who was trying to hook me up with the nephew, 
he started flirting with my mom. I was like, what is going on? My mom was wearing sunglasses and he's like, oh, I can see your eyes through the sunglasses. Your eyes are really beautiful. That's not what you say if you're just meeting someone. Like, obviously you're trying to get somewhere. Like, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, okay. I was keeping an eye on him. And so when my mom went to shake hands, he was holding her hand for like maybe a minute. Like I saw my mom, her hand was like already like, you know, half there. It wasn't like a full handshake. But he just kept on grabbing on her hand and I was like, what is he doing in front of his wife? When his wife was joking to my mom that saying that he, she had two husbands, like her brother-in-law and her husband were her two husbands, I guess. The husband goes, oh, you have two husbands? Well, I guess I'll take her. And he just grabs my mom and like wraps his hands over my mom. And I was like, what are you doing? After my mom like stepped aside like two, they were like two feet apart. And his hand was still on my mom's back. Like, what are you doing? She already kind of like awkwardly stepped aside and you're still having your hand behind my mom's back? What is going on? And he did that in front of his wife. like. And she was totally okay with it. She wasn't even like freaking out or anything. I would be freaking out if my husband did that, but you know. And then so I told my mom in Chinese, like, Mom, let's go, let's go. I want to leave. And I get, got, and so I gathered up the kids and say, Hey, let's get in the car, let's go. And so we finally went back home. So glad I we left that awkward situation. Three minutes into our trail, we see this truck driving by, and I think, Oh, that's the son. That's a 23 year old nephew that she was pointing to. I knew it was him because nobody was back there in the cabin. Nobody else. It was only them because everyone went back home because Monday it would be a work day. And he was the only one going towards the cabin trail. Other than that, there's nowhere else for you to go. It's just the cabins. So had I not left in two minutes, I probably would have had met the sun. That would have been so awkward. It would have been just horrible. But anyways, that is my story. If you guys had any other weird stories that has happened to you, make sure you leave it in the comments below. I always read your comments and don't forget to give this a like if you guys thought it was really awkward because it was. Especially, it was probably a lot more awkwarder. Awkwarder. Probably a lot more awkward in that situation than what I'm trying to tell you because and then just replaying that thing, it's just like, whoa, man, that was actually really awkward. And don't forget, I'm having my 200 subby giveaway, so don't forget to subscribe because once I hit 200, I'll give more information about my giveaway. But one of the rules is that you must be subscribed to my channel in order to have a chance of winning my giveaway. Go ahead and click that subscribe button, and don't forget to check out all my social media sites, my Instagram, my Twitter, my AskFM, all of them is the vlog girl, so make sure you guys go check it out. So this has been a long story, but thank you guys for watching, and that's all the time we have for today. This girl, Felicia, signing out.